Uh, thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. You loved our next guest when she starred alongside John Cena in the hilarious Blockers. And now you can see Sarayu Blue in the new NBC comedy, I Feel Bad. Let's take a look. Here's what every woman knows. We feel bad about something every day. Like sometimes, I cheat on my husband in my sleep. You had that dream again, didn't you? All right. Let me introduce me. Every morning is totally nuts around here. Mama's running off to work. Fancy career lady abandoning her kids. I am so sorry we can't afford a stranger to take care of you. I never know what I'll feel bad about, but I know it's always just around the corner. Oh God, are we wearing the same jean jacket? I'm sorry, I, I thought you were your mother. What? You remind me of her sometimes, just in how you look and sound and act and where you carry your weight. And there it is. So I just need you guys to be really honest with me, okay? Just tell me the truth. I'm still doable, right? Well, uh, I'm a yes. We don't do you. Interesting, okay, please continue. It's like pizza. Even if it's not the greatest pizza, some pizza is better than no pizza. Uh, it's more like older sofa pizza that has three kids at home. Is it just me or does pizza sound really good right now? My friends and I are gonna do dance. I don't like dancing these days. All that gyrating. Okay. Let's go before this creeps into your long-term memory. Go. We're telling Lily that she cannot be on the dance team. It's pretty anti-feminist to refuse Lily the dignity of her choice to dance. Norman, I usually love discussing the finer points of feminism with you, but you're uh, stepping on a giant boob. Oh, oh my God, is he motorboating no, 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 her? No. When did kids dancing become all, you know, oh, here, here, my legs, wide open. <laughs> my shoe bounced right off his six pack. God, he's strong. I don't look like my mom yet. All right, baby, we gotta go. This is the worst day of my life. What's wrong with you, man? Everybody, please welcome Sorry You Blue. <laughs> hey there. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And thanks for having me. Congratulations on a show. Thanks. On a very funny show, thank too. Thank you, thank you. Um, I, I said this in the green room, you know, like oftentimes networks or production companies build shows around someone that they like, around right. a personality. And sometimes that does not translate to viewers also thinking that show should be built around them. But I was excited to watch this because I think as soon as you come on screen, it's like, oh, I want to watch this person. I want to see what they go through. And then you're also very funny and, and talented Thank as you well. Thank you so much. That means the world to me because it's such an incredible experience. And I don't know if you know this, but the role was actually not originally written Indian. And it was, I mean, it, it was only built around me because I auditioned and got the role. And then they ended up getting, uh, of course, it made it more specific. We got South Asian parents and biracial children. And it just really brought, I think, a specificity to the show that it, it you know, obviously. And also just is obviously exciting for me. <laughs> yeah, 100%. What does that feel like when they start building it around you like that? When it's like, OK, it wasn't this, but now we're going to make it you, and we're going to build it for you. I mean, I think it feels incredible. You yeah. know, it's an opportunity that uh, I certainly would never have expected but dreamed for. And uh, Asim Batra, who is the writer and the creator of the series, is Indian American, and so we have a certain shorthand that's really awesome, and it brings this life to it. And um, Mother Joffrey, I think, is so incredible as my mother. I mean, it's like my mother, you know? So it's really exciting to get to do this and show what this is, because frankly, this is what the world looks like, you know? Do you think she knew that she was gonna change it after she, she brought you in to be like, see how good this show would be uh, if she was the star? Maybe we should change it to be? I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I don't know how much it really changed. I mean, it changed in terms of casting, and certainly there are pieces in there that make it more uh, specific to our heritage, but the other part of it is we're just a family. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it really still translates and worked, and that was amazing. I think it, it goes to show how much commonality there is between exactly. between us and between right. cultures, while at the same time, those minute and specific differences make for a what feels like a very fresh and, and different story. Yeah, that's how I feel. I always say it's sort of, it's specific and yet universal at the same time. What was your audition like? Um, 
It was crazy. I, I remember walking in and uh, Amy wasn't there, but Julianne Robinson, the director, was there and Asim and the producers. And I really wanted this one. Like I was like, this is me on a page. And I think I was, I got there first and I was like, oh, I don't want to audition first. I don't want to audition first. And so I, because I have all sorts of tricks in my head that are not real. Why is that? And, uh, yeah, I just was like, I just didn't want to be the first to say the words because right. I just wanted to have a moment to collect myself. So I like went to the bathroom and then I ended up going, I think, third. And it just was there. It was just popping. It came to life. Julianne gave me some phenomenal direction. And I just remember getting in my car and call, my, my husband says that I called him and I was in the car and I was like, babe, babe, I think I nailed it. And, I, wow. and he was like, honey, can you please pull over? <laughs> and then, uh, and then you know, you just wait and you see. And, you know, it's, it's the kind of role that normally would be offered to a star. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty incredible experience that... Um, they went my way. Well, how often do you do you get excited about uh, an audition like that? Because I mean, as an actress, you have to audition all the time. So sure. one of the guard, one of the sort of defensive guards that you have to have as a working actor is yeah. to almost throw an audition away as soon as right. you leave the room. Yeah, I'm big on that. I actually throw my sides away immediately and delete every email about it. Um, <laughs> do you really? I really do. I've decided. I'm like, I just gotta let it go. Move on. So when you get the email that you have a callback or that you got the part, you can be like, like, for can what? You the sides again. <laughs> I don't even remember what that was. <laughs> um, this one felt special in a very different way. Like, this one landed with me and resonated with me in a way that was like, that's my voice. That's how I talk. That's who I am. I mean, it was sort of odd that it hadn't been written for me because it felt so specific. At the same time, my guess is a lot of women who read for the role felt that way because that's a real testament to the writing. Um, it's, it's a show that really shows how we all feel in life. We all feel like we're kind of treading water and juggling so many things and there's balls dropping left and right. And so um, that part of us is shown in the show and I think that's, my guess is everyone resonated with it when they read for it. So then they start building the show around you. You're the first to get cast, I'm imagining. I was the second. Paul, I believe, had the role first. Yeah. Really? Yeah. The, hus the, the yeah. man who plays your husband yeah. had the role first? Yeah. Oh, that's so fascinating. Well, I think there may have been a relationship there already. And they, you know, Emmett's sort of a, it's a hard role to cast. I mean, not for any reason other than it's the lead and you really want that right person. I don't think it was much earlier by any stretch of the imagination. But I remember reading with him at my test. And so I think, uh, and we just had an automatic chemistry. Were you always, like, when you got into, when you got into acting, was it to, was it for comedy? No, it was for both. It was just for acting. But I have always loved comedy. I think that there is, I, for me, comedy is so much about a rhythm and a timing and a feel. And it feels very, really vibrant. And it's so much fun to do, you know? More fun on set. Really fun on set. Really fun on set. I mean, we break a lot. I mean, the outtakes will be fascinating. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, wow, they still managed to edit that together. That's good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's re it's a fun life. It's a really fun life. You know, I'm always curious. You've done, uh, like, multi-cam sitcoms before as well, both as a guest star and, like, reoccurring role. And something like I Feel Bad is a, the kind of show that we're seeing more and more of now in the yeah. sense that it's not a multi-cam. Yeah. But it's, I think, meant in a lot of ways to re replace what the multi-cam was because yeah. we're kind of beyond that in yeah. the audience. So to a certain degree, as an, uh, as an actress on it, you have to hit some of the kind of multicam beats mm -hmm. or tones while at the same time kind of restricting yourself mm -hmm. because you, you're not playing for a big audience. Right. Is that something that you're aware of when you're... I am aware of that, yeah. yeah. I mean, even when I'm working on auditions for all that kind of stuff, I think there's a difference tonally that really matters. And, you know, I think single camera, a big part of that is... Um, it's the truth factor. It's sort of the groundedness of it, of the moment, but it's still timing. It's still rhythm. I mean, editing's a huge part of it, and we have an incredible post-production team um, because you'll see the way they'll cut to certain looks. And, you know, you saw the same thing really in Parks and Recs and yeah. a lot of brilliant shows. But you see this sort of, like, rhythm to how the joke is landing. And, you know, multicam, you have a little more control over that because you're all sort of just timing it out together. In single camera, you have to be a little more subtle and nuanced, I think. It's like the difference of going like, hmm. Yeah. And going, hmm, to the it's, audience. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you'll see many hammy moments from me. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, um, but yes, I think so. And now the, um, the, the people that play your parents yeah. are incredible. Who are they again? Mother Joffrey and Brian George. 
and they're really spectacular. I mean, Mother brings such a, um, a life to that character. I mean, these little moments that she works out so brilliantly and so nuanced and so true. I mean, just so authentic. And that's one of the things I really love about our show and our cast is you see a real authenticity with it, you know? And that goes back to the single camera aspect as well. One of the things that I love about uh, I Feel Bad, and I think a, a few shows in the past in the past few years, is that it's the family dynamic, mm -hmm. specifically from, from the perspective of the mother. Whereas when I, I remember when I was growing up, the majority of the sitcoms were like from the perspective of the lazy husband. Uh -huh. And it was like, and now we've reached this point where it's like, no one, wa no one wants to hear that perspective yeah, of the guy who's like change. complaining about his wife and kids. Right, the ball know? and chain. Yeah, we want to see the person who's holding it all together. We want to see the person who's struggling to make sure that everybody's living their best life al al along with her. Yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite parts about the show as well. Not just because I get to do it. Um, but, you know, you really do see the female perspective and you see what it feels like trying to hold it all together and you see why something's got to give, which is, I mean, one of Great the- Great movie. Yeah, no, yeah, it's exactly. Um, but you, you sort of, because of that, I, the word I keep hearing is relatable, which makes me so happy because I think what it is is people feel seen and they feel represented and they feel like it's okay to not have it all or not be enough, and we get to laugh at ourselves, you know? Do you feel like that often in your personal life? I very much do. I mean, I yeah. think we all do. I mean, Asim Bhattar talks about how the idea of I feel bad was such a fertile ground to sort of go from. You know, these writers have so many stories that they're able to go, well, they're, in, you know, mm -hmm. my kid did this, or my mom said this, or I felt bad at work because of this, and we all have them. I mean, the number of times that in a day you think, God, I just, I'm so sorry. I feel so bad that I didn't call you back right away or whatever it is, you know? And is that, I wonder if that's what the writer's room is like on this show. They just go in, they go, okay, what do you feel yeah, bad about today? Let's go. And yeah. then by lunch- They're like, we have like, too many need, episodes. I need a drink. I, yeah. There's too many things I feel bad about. Yeah, exactly. Can we come back and talk about the things we feel good about here? I know, right? I know, I'm getting to that point too, where I'm like, people are like, what do you feel bad about? And I'm like, honestly, right now, not much. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good things, life I'm living. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty grateful. I feel bad on screen, not off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what was your what was your first role? Um, I was in Pippin. <laughs> in my high school musical, I was uh, in the ensemble. Thank you for asking. <laughs> professional role. Oh, 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 I see. Well, I'm just making a jump. Uh huh. Um, I wanted to know about Pippin. Professional but... role was I did a. Oh, I'm trying to think. Well, my, I did theater at, at University of Iowa, and I remember the first, I did like a summer repertory show, um, and I can't even remember the name of the play, something about death. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, my brain's not functioning. And then I think in LA- Venice? Huh? Death in Venice? No, it was like a really obscure play. It was oh, okay. University of Iowa. It was like a real obscure play. Like we were like, we can get the rights to that. <laughs> um, we have $4. Um, <laughs> and then- <laughs> Some playwright in a hovel somewhere was like, yes! I know! I'm doing my play! Yes, royalties! Um, and then I did, um, in LA, I remember booking a Polaroid commercial, wow. which was like, it's still one of my favorite things I've ever gotten to do. It was a really cool spot because I, uh, again, Indians weren't really on TV at the time, and I was wearing a sari. And I remember the audition was, the guy just kept going, look up, look down, look up, look down. And I was like... And then uh, it turned into this really cool spot where this guy's kind of like, I'm at a cafe and I'm wearing the bindi and he keeps looking at me like, you know, and I get kind of like annoyed, like stop staring, asshole. And he ends up um, like, I guess I, oh, that's right. I took a photo of it with those sticker cameras and I take the bindi sticker ca uh, photo and I put it on his forehead and I walk away. <laughs> It just always made me laugh. You said that uh, you know not many Indian people were on TV at the time. Yeah. When you were when you had decided that you wanted to become an actress, who were some of your heroes? Was there anybody that you could look at as a, as an Indian actress at the time? And uh, I mean, I was I remember like Sarita Chowdhury, who was in Mississippi Masala. Oh, right. um, she's amazing. She's incredible. You know, there's a lot of people who have worked really hard to try to pave the way. Um, and I think what ends up happening when you don't see yourself represented is you find glimmers of it in people who don't look like you, but that you still connect with. And then um, 
I think it means so much more to me now getting to be in this position because I realize just how much of a honor it is. You know, like this is still, still pretty slow to change. Yeah. And the reality is me getting this job is one of the biggest uh, wins. Like, I mean, I think it almost feels like a Cinderella story, you know? So in terms of like who I looked up to, I mean, there were a lot of brilliant actresses and actors and it was always incredible to watch, but getting to actually see who looked like me, I, it's, it's been a slow shift. Well, it's such a slow shift that I remember when I went to a screening of Blockers. Yeah. And you see that you're John Cena's wife, yep. and he had, and the two of you have a mixed race daughter. That instead of that just being able to go by, right. my brain actually, went, oh, that's interesting. Right. I like that they made that choice, and, right. and you don't even ha like. I'd like to be at a point where I my brain does not do that. I would love that as well. Yeah. I think so many people would, and I think that goes back to the times we're in and what people are looking for. I mean, that goes back to sort of authentic representation and and. You know, we see this all the time in life, you know, so it's time for us to start seeing it in TV, and I think there's a real call for it. I wonder if you, if, and film if and you theater. feel that way when you still, when you get cast. If I feel which way? If you feel like, oh, I, I can't believe they're they're going with me for this. How are they going to? Absolutely. How are they going to make this I work rather than the, just work? When I got this role, I was absolutely huddled on the floor, <laughs> like, just like shaking and weeping and just like, I mean, just I think the number of people who have come out in droves going, this happened? I mean, I had what, 5,000 followers on Twitter? You know what I mean? Like this wasn't, this wasn't the move that anyone saw network television making, even now. This wasn't that move. This was still considered sort of like, can we do this? And it's really exciting that that is happening. And I'm just so hopeful that this is like the beginning of this is now the new normal. Does that feel like pressure on you that they made this decision? Uh, no, it feels like an honor. It feels exciting. I feel proud. I feel like I get to show people that um, we're out here yeah. <laughs> and that we're good. Yeah. And um, you know, it's sort of like, it's, it's great. I'm up for it. Let's play. <laughs> uh, let's get some questions for our audience. Who's a question? Hi. Um, first of all, thank you so much for being here and for thank this role. Um, I'm actually you. a child of Nick's parents. You so are? This feels very special to have this come out. Um, but my question is actually about your character and how, um, how you relate to her. Um, which aspects of your character do, would you say are like very close to you? Yeah. And then which parts would you say are like... I really have to like reach for this or like right. don't identify as much. I think the parts of Emmett that I relate to are so much around how honest she is and flawed she is. You know, she's got this quality about her that is like, okay, sure, maybe it's the biggest mistake I've ever made, but let's try it and see what happens, you know? And you're just like, it's like watching a train wreck. And look, on the inside, that's how I feel. I kind of feel like, oh, I'm gonna cross my fingers and spit and see how this goes. Um, I'm trying to think. The, so far, I probably, the part I have to stretch for is I'm not a big video game person. <laughs> My husband is, um, which has been very informative and great for our marriage. Um, but he's like, okay, then you do this. I'm like, okay. But, um, but you know, there was, a, there was a moment where I was trying to say something about how this character is an president of the apocalyptic transitional government. And I swear, like, it was like, this is, we're going to be here all day. How many takes can we, you know? So that, that is probably the part that is stretching for me more. But the actual character and the humanity of her, I connect to very easily. With the direction, like, make it sound like you know how to say that. <laughs> make can that you please casual. be uh, good at this? Uh, yeah, no, they just were really patient with me. Let me just do take after take. The cast of guys uh, in the at, at the video game company are great. I've yeah, seen all of them. I, love I think them. most of them in like little roles here and there. Yeah. And like when they showed up, I was like, oh, I'm so glad that you're going to be on TV weekly I know. To, to watch these. And guys. they're amazing, and they do they have really incredible like improv skills, and it's like I mean I'm biting the inside of my cheek almost every day when I'm working with them. Uh, next question. Hi. Hi. What would you say was the biggest thing you learned while shooting this show? Oh, uh, stamina. You know, it's been so much fun to get to do this physical comedy and get to play so much. And it's a real reminder when you're doing something like this that you have to really take care of yourself and manage your energy. And you know what? I wasn't, 
you know, a lot of times you sort of talk about stretching yourself thin. We do it in life all the time. And for the first time, I was like, hey, I don't have time for that person. I don't have time for this. I have to focus. And really, it's like you become your own. You become an athlete. I think we have time for one more. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, so obviously, like, the family-centric sitcom is very popular. What mm -hmm. is it about I Feel Bad that felt, like, new and fresh and different? Well, in all honesty, part of what makes it new and fresh and different is the fact that they have an Indian female lead and an uh, interracial relationship. That in and of itself is revolutionary already. And then to have it not, it not be only about that is also part of it, meaning like we're just a family, which it's not to say that we don't have the specificity. I mean, we are Indian, <laughs> and you will see it. But I think that sort of representation is... Um, new still, you but know, also still fresh. Not, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but no. they're not a fish out of water Indian story. Thank you, that's a great know? other point, yes. They're not, like you watch that's the first exactly episode it. and the plot that revolves around the family is not like, oh my God, my mother's traditions and heritages are really right. getting in the way of a dinner party that I'm trying right. to throw. It's more like, no, the parents are just like any other sort of senior citizens and they can be kind of frustrating and they can get in the way. Yeah, Asim calls it... Um, I think it was a scene that did, said this. She said she calls it, I love Lucy meets everybody loves Raymond meets 30 Rock. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's exactly it. Three really great shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can see it. You see the pieces of all that. So I think maybe, and also, of course, the work environment being fleshed out is part of the, the difference, too. I mean, you get to see a bit of a life there. You know, we, and we forgot to mention it, but Amy Poehler is the executive producer of yeah. this. And you were talking about sort of learning to pace yourself yep. and the kind of stamina that you need to be sort of number one on the call sheet for a show like this. She did it for, it's a crazy thing to hear. Yeah, right? it's still crazy. Uh, she That's did crazy. it for a number of years with Parks and Rec. Yeah. Did you go to her for advice on how to, how to live this new crazy life you were going to be living? Yeah, I mean, she's really, the thing about Amy that's so incredible is she's exactly as genuine as she seems. She's exactly that genuine and sincere, and she really sort of creates this environment. And so, by the way, do Asim and Julianne. I mean, this group of women are such a collaborative and generous force, you know? And there's this sense of, like, we're all in it together. Um, but I was saying that there's a quote Amy said recently in an interview where she said, uh, someone was asking, like, sort of, what's your advice or what do you, what are your thoughts on this? And she said, you know, you have to, you have to care about let me get this right. You have to care about being good and how you feel about yourself, but you can't care about what people think about how good you are and how you look. And I thought that's exactly the difference. That's it right there. You got to trust yourself. You've got to sort of show up and do what you can and try to get there, but you can't get caught up in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, don't get caught up in the comments. No, that's I a think, rabbit hole. <laughs> I think most of them are going to be good, so so you're all set there. Yeah. Uh, the show, I Feel Bad, is on NBC. When What what nights is it on? So we start on October 4th at our regular time slot, which is 9.30, 8.30 Central, right after Will and Grace. Right after Will and Grace. Everybody give her a big round of applause. Let's hear Thank it. Thank you all so much.